Welcome to the second weekend, Arizona Wildcat fans, Mike and Jesse. I couldn't be more excited to say second weekend because it's not been in the Arizona vernacular very often. We all knew we were going to get here, right? Like this mm -hmm. was a, it was a given. <laughs> no, it's a, it's never a given. Obviously after last year, especially um, losing in the first round, um, Man, you know, it's just I know we we I know we all felt pretty tight. I heard I heard the team say after Long Beach State, I think Umar, it, it felt good to get one down. <laughs> so yeah. um that's yeah. a couple hard fought games. I thought we played well. It's good to be here. Right on. Well, yeah. we're gonna we're gonna get into some stuff today. I've I've been trying to think about a way to preview listeners because there's a lot, you know, there's a lot of coverage this time of year. And we oh, certainly yeah. we certainly don't need to be redundant in any way. So I think we're going to break down some specific defensive offensive elements to the game and the weekend. And we both got our, our game jerseys on. Yeah. Um, we're ready to tag in in case coach. Who do, you, us. who do you have there, by the way, is that Jordan Hill? Uh, I believe that's Jordan Hill. Yes. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> that, this, I'm from Atlanta. Jordan yes. Hill was, uh, was there when I was there. We were... This is my, uh, this is like circa 2005 Hassan Adams. Um, that's so sick. Of course, I wanted Salim Stoudemire, but they were so, yeah. uh, you know, so I'll take his hot sauce. The hot sauce jersey is complete fire. Complete uh, fire. He, he was there when I was there as well. Uh, I was a huge, huge fan. Yeah. Who uh, would most you... of my jerseys, yeah. Go ahead. most of my jerseys are, per are purchased like contemporaneously. So like I have some, it's like you have a, you, I think I have like a Jamel Horn jersey. And it's just like, <laughs> it's like I went to the bookstore, I grabbed what was there, or well, I got a lot of gifts. So I think I probably have like nine jerseys. And uh, it's just like, mom, thank you for, you know, getting me Chase Buttinger. I appreciate that. I think <laughs> those companies more than any probably feast off of impulse purchasing and oh 100 yeah and yeah some, some uh excitement in the moment well anyway let's i i yeah let's um since we're going there let's do you have a, a particular sweet 16 memory that you're fond of in arizona like history? a good one Whatever. um yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Only, it's only it's only winning vibes today yeah only winning vibes um oh you know, you go first. Start okay. us off. <laughs> you know, it's full of, it's, full of fear and anxiety over here. I know it's easy. <laughs> it's easy to say. Ninety-seven, the Arizona Kansas is probably sure. the the most important game in our in our school history, and it was certainly. I I told you on one episode where we showed that little clip. I think I stayed up till three thirty in the morning because that was over mm -hmm. spring spring break when I was a, I think I was a, sophomore in college. Um, but let's, huh. Hmm. Yeah. I like that. Um, obviously, you know, I, I would go Duke in Anaheim. Yeah. That's yeah. huge. It's, it's hard not to go. What I'm noticing is it's hard to go with one that resulted in a painful loss the next day. Like right. those, the two, the two I was thinking of is that one in 11 against Duke. And then the, um, sorry, the Oklahoma state game of 2005, this, this yeah. year. When yes, yes. when Salim hit that you know yeah. impossible eighteen footer, and then the in in my experience the most painful loss in school history was the Illinois. Yeah, game. of course. So yeah, and that's it, it's exactly where my mind went. By the way, it's like, <laughs> what's your favorite Sweet Sixteen? And I was like, oh, I mean the San Diego State win when then we get our our you know dreams crushed by uh, Wisconsin or the Oklahoma State win where then we get our dreams crushed by Illinois. Um, so how about the, how about this? Two thousand winning is fun. Two thousand twenty four. Yeah, this is gonna be my favorite one today. <laughs> who get who gets your bear down award for last week, Mike? Tommy Lloyd gets my bear down award. Coach Tommy is uh, honestly, I it, it, he made adjustments quick more quickly than he, than I, I expected, and because there were some guys that got exploited defensively or weren't showing up offensively. So Kylan apparently had a hand, a hand injury, um, wasn't shooting well. He swaps in um, JB and Jane Bradley um, was phenomenal in in that win and really instrumental. And so, you know, making that switch kind of pretty quickly and then really loading up on JB down the stretch. Thought that was great. Sitting Caleb down the stretch was super useful. That takes balls. And then really um, the ball screen coverage did eventually get exploited. I thought Balo was going to be okay in space. He generally was until later into this, I mean, sort of, you know, into the second half. I think it maybe was like the 15 minute mark that um, 
they Dayton finally figured out like, Hey, if we do a high ball screen on them, you know, we can, you know, we, we can hit him for deep threes or we can, um, you know, if he starts respecting the three, then, you know, coming out farther, then we can just blow by him. Um, and so Tommy responded to that with a, a small ball lineup for a while with uh Keyshawn at the five. And it didn't look like super pretty at all times. It was, it was, you know, kind of scrappy and we got exploited down low uh, at least once, um, you know, with a high low um, because Holmes is just much bigger. <laughs> Than, than Johnson, but um, it took balls. He stuck with it. That it ended up being super successful, um, and you know kind of secured the victory. And so there was there was a, a a sequence of tough choices that I thought he made and um, and stuck with, and and they were all fruitful. And it's cool to see that it took guts, which everybody, you know, the the, the criticism of Tommy has been sometimes mm -hmm. his his stubbornness, his almost like over conviction at times. And, yeah. um, and so to see that agility in real time and under the highest of stakes is pretty totally. exciting, right? Yeah. He's in a knife fight and, and he pulls mm -hmm. out a, you know, uh, he, he goes in a direction that isn't maybe, you know, the, the, the big hug that he likes to do to his guys and his, what he likes to do. Oh no, we like to do what we do. And I trust my guys, but you know, he, he changes course. Super yeah. impressive. Yeah. Yeah. You know? oh, there's so many ways to go and, I would just say maybe it's a little bit of a cop out, but also maybe a, a, a segue for you. I'm going to go with the bench. Ooh, yeah. I'm going to go with the bench, and yeah, I th I think what I what I see that wasn't there in some of the losses was the response to just playing the game. Mo Mo Crevis, like just yeah. playing playing through playing through adversity rather than mm -hmm. sort of like collapsing or giving up. Um, yeah. Big, big shout out to KJ Lewis, who almost has been like a given on our show and we haven't really mentioned him in, if you had right. just, if you, all you knew about us was watching these episodes, you'd think we didn't think much of KJ. We barely mentioned it's him. Funny. It's funny because yeah. you, because we have such a reverence for that kid. The respect is so high. Yeah. So, if if it was true that uh, maybe he wasn't totally physically at his best in the first round, he bounced back. Oh, that's right. I forgot about made, that. Yeah. He made an early three and then, um, you know, made that huge chase down block on the three. Just like guys that have a nose for the moment rather than rather than wanting to collapse. And I think that's a big theme with why we were so excited about the DNA of this team and then why it yeah. got so perplexing in the pack. Totally. Well. Is like yeah. the DNA of this team is actually more resilient and responsive than we've seen, and mm -hmm. um, it, when it's there, it's it's hard not to like our chances. So I'm going to just yeah. shout out the bench because those guys have been doing it all year. Bradley is legitimately one of the you know 20, 25 best players in the country, and he's coming off the bench. Um, yeah, and you know more on that this off season. But people like, are going to hate you for saying it. And it's absolutely true. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I think he's just, you know, his he's, defense is so impactful. He's and, that good. Uh, and, and his ability to, you know, you see him now, his, the shots are dropping. Um, he's, he's obviously more comfortable driving and, and in mid range shots that were kind of uh, not quite in, on balance or not quite feeling right previously. It, it's just so cool to see. Yeah. 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 And it's, and, and I get why Colin Boswell starts. And yeah. I think, I think it's, got to stay that way i'm not getting into that whole conversation um the kid, <laughs> no. uh, Kyle, colin boswell was awesome against long beach and yeah um you, oh. you you were one of the ones who who said right after the game don't hold don't hold his stat line against him you thought he looked pretty positive yeah against state against him uh kylan yeah yeah i did yeah. yeah i thought he he i thought he was under control you know it, everybody had some some defensive lapses but that's just that you know you're you're going to get you're playing good teams you're going to get exposed from time to time and so you could pluck up a, a video clip and be like ah you know you're standing still and you missed a switch or whatever it's okay you know it's stuff happens um generally he played on with really great composure and great energy and and so um played within the offense and so it, you know if, if he knew that his hand wasn't quite right and which is what the what the you know the buzz was Good for him not to force it and um, just be a part of this of, of the team and, and cheer it on and, and look at us. We got that win. Totally. And I have yeah. confidence that he has a good chance uh, tonight to to play well. Um, I have really and, big confidence. And we're going to talk right. about why. Right. Yeah. Right on. OK, well, let's get into Clemson. Then you wanted to start. You're really you've been focusing a lot on breaking down them as a team. So tell me where yeah. you'd like to start. Um. 
Yeah, Clemson, interesting. I guess maybe it, a lot of people talk about like how Clemson is going to attack us. I, I, I'd like to talk about how we're going to attack them. Cool. Um, yeah, so Clemson, um, a fairly balanced team, but I, I think that they can be weak um, defensively, both at the point of attack and on rotations. Now, they're extremely tall. You you're gonna people are gonna look at the at the pictures and be like, ah, white guys, you know, like these guys. They are tall, they are strong, you know, and inside, um, with uh, you know, Hall and and Chef, um, but those the the the, ro- the rotations just aren't quite crispy, and yeah. um, and like I said, the point of attack, and so they end up back in the paint. They end up giving up a lot of threes, and that's one of those reasons why I've got some faith um in kind of boswell especially to yeah. exploit the hey we're gonna we're we forgot to go over the screen joe gerard has the habit of doing that mm-hmm. um or we hey we doubled the post with chef so bala gets, gets a paint touch which we're obviously going to try to exploit the four man comes in to, to double which they love to do if if he's able if Bala's is able to kick that out and anticipate it um we should be feasting off of those today right on yeah, let me show you a couple of clips. We're please. We're thinking the same. Yeah. 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 So here's one in the in the ball screen coverage. Here, let me get it on uh, theater mode. Um, interesting how they're they're really at almost a hedge, but like they're yeah both they are kind of at the screen. But what yeah what makes this play is this guy's in a bit. This is Shefflin. Is that his name? It's Chef, right? Yeah. Chef. I call him Chef. Chef yeah. Yeah, so Chef's inability to handle an athletic wing four combo. So oh, they handle totally. the role. They handle the role, but then he swings mm-hmm. it and just, just yeah, he's out of position and totally he, out of position. Yeah, and, and and he he does not have the hips to recover at no. all. Um, and so if you're able to do a second action, right? Yeah, like you saw there, they defend the first action. Congratulations. Now you've yeah. bent the defense though. And they don't, they don't amoeba back, you know, they don't spread back. It, it's just like, oh, whoops. They they really do seem vulnerable to what we're good at if we don't get suckered into lazy threes. I think if I'm 100%. Clemson, if I'm Clemson, I'm packing the lane and I'm, mm-hmm. I'm taking my chances with Boswell and Love and baiting them um, as Long Beach did, you know, but these yeah. guys are a little, a little better defensively than Long Beach. But yeah. this is, uh, this is an example here. Go ahead. You're gonna say something. No, please. No, go for it. So here's another high ball screen example with Baylor. Mm-hmm. And so he's now he's a step behind the touch. And right. you have the second screener. I thought this was kind of a unique play. Um, and so I Did love so here's the back screen him. Yep, here's your Boswell yeah. point. But like I think what you were saying, they're not really connected. There wasn't great communication no. here. Oh God. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if that happened to us, we'd be like showing this as an example of how we're not connected right 100 percent. and and you would say gosh i hope by the end of the season we fix that and so uh, guess what it is you know we're at the dance like i i don't have a whole lot of faith that they've got they were like hey we we've, we've solved that and um here's another one where he's coming around a curl so now they're in like mm-hmm. a yeah it's not quite a drop but he's not at the touch yeah. And you're going to see this. Not lack a deep of drop, com- but it's a drop. Yeah. I think this one is a lack of communication on Clemson's part. So there's the roller. Now that yeah, was just dominating just the yeah deep in there. Um, yeah. This is this is what I saw over and over again watching even old Clemson videos throughout the year. Um, is that yeah they they just aren't now they're they're really tall. Like, 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 let's not forget it. Like they are really, really tall inside. So I do wonder about, you know, sometimes we have an inability to finish out like through tall guys. Like I think Capella sometimes, you know, when he's on his drives, like uh-huh. that can, that can bother him. Boswell for um, sure. Boswell for sure. And so, you know, you either have ba- to follow Balo for sure. Yeah. Him Struggles. too. Yeah. yeah. And, and PJ Hall is strong, you know, he's yeah. a strong guy. Um, so and he's, he's big. He's got a 7'2 wingspan, I'm pretty sure, like a 7'1 something wingspan. So he's not, this is not like a a little guy. He is, if people think that PJ Hall is like a pushover in some way, they're going yeah. to be shocked with yeah. his uh, fluidity and how strong he is. Um, so, big, strong you know, guy. Yeah. We like to score inside. They have the height to make and the length to make that difficult. Now, on the flip side, um, 
you know, they are foul prone. And if our guys are able to, you know, go in there with authority um, and maybe force them to pick up some fouls, that's, that's amazing for us because we'll talk about it. Their bench is kind of lacking. Um, and, and so, or go up, you know, with, with a bit of craftiness and, uh, and so just get them a little off balance because like you noted, these aren't guys that um, that are super fluid in in recovering or, or you know maintaining space. There's been a lot made about they're a, primarily a man team, ninety four percent, five point six percent. But what do yeah. you make? What do you make of these numbers? And that they're actually they're actually sort of like barely an average points mm-hmm. per it, just in terms of points per possession with man, and they're actually mm-hmm. quite good. Is that the Scott Hatterberg effect? Is that that the coach really knows when to employ his own, or is there something here that we should be looking for? Yeah, it's interesting. I they I, I look I looked and broke down like which games that they did actually run a zone on, and the games where they ran a lot of zone, they were I think they were like uh, four and and one, right? Um, so that's a lot of zone was like twenty percent of of the of the possessions that they ran were, were zone against Baylor. Um, no, no, sorry. No, throughout the throughout the season, throughout their entire season, okay. they ran. They had about five games where they ran twenty percent. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, kind of okay. kind of zone heavy, and you know, for them, um, and those were games that they won. Um, right, right. They, they did they did dabble with zone in like five other games, and they, I think they were either like two and three or one and four, and so, um, I think they they like to try to see if the zone will work, and if it if it's not effective. Um, you know, they're, they're probably likely to just scrap it and go back to their base man defense. So it, it, that's probably good coaching to say, look, you know, we're going to try this zone. And if it's not taking, you know, we need to, we need to cut it and go back. Um, the other thing that they'd like to do is, and you'll see that they've got some pressing and, uh, and it's, they've got some good numbers on their press at the bottom there. Yep. Um, so, you know, very good, excellent, good. Um, they do actually like to press, you know, they have a habit of pressing in games that they're losing as well. Mm-hmm. And so I'm curious to see, because I think that they, they recognize that on offense that they, they play with a bit of a slow pace. And so that they need to slow down the other team um, in order to keep, you know, in order to have a chance to get back into the game mm-hmm. uh, because mm-hmm. they don't want to have to speed up their own offense. They need to slow down the other teams. Um, so it'll be interesting to see today, obviously with our uh, propensity to play in transition um, and our desire to go up early and and try to make them chase us, which they're not going to want to do. Do we see that press? Yeah, this could be one of those games, given everything you just said, and then on top of the circumstances, which completely favor Arizona. Uh, right. Clemson had next to the hardest transition here between, uh, as as is well chronicled, if you haven't read up on the coach's <laughs> presser. You if can, you're watching they, us, you've yeah. probably heard. <laughs> yeah, they got in, they got at 3 30 in the morning and took off four o'clock the same day uh, after playing Sunday night. Day. And we we yeah. were done by by one o'clock on Saturday and resting at home at six o'clock. And that's and then shooting out to LA, which is a super easy trip for us. They had to super. come all the way out. It's it's like you know you've heard me this year. I thought that was part of our challenge in December was Tommy's scheduling was okay but the travel and logistics of the schedule ended up kind of really biting us a little and i think i yeah, wonder, I wonder if recently. he yeah i wonder if he reviews it does some self-review on that but it's a thing yeah. it's really hard to be on planes and it's really hard to not get sleep and um all of that favors us so i i'm really hoping that you know whatever we do we need to make them really earn whatever they get on both yeah. ends cuz they yeah. they can't they can't have much in the tank the adrenaline will go for a little bit but in the second half we really really need to make them make them hurt <laughs> yeah and and you were you know a, a collegiate coach and so you've got some experience in this that that's a real thing right that if you are you know, oh, these guys are young and they're athletes. Yeah, but they're they're also playing against elite athletes themselves, yeah, and they exactly. they need every bit of of what they have in order to get to. You know, you want to be at one hundred and five percent at times, and and if you're at you know ninety percent, that doesn't seem like a lot. It's enough to make a, ma- a massive difference, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, probably there's truth in both that since they are young guys, the recovery isn't too much of a big deal as it would be for mm-hmm. you or you or me, but right. Um, but it's it, it I, I think even let's just say even if fatigue's not an issue, they had so little prep time. Yeah. That that's why I'm wondering if they'll be able to 
adjust if they need to. And yeah, they um, said I, um, yeah. they had like one bad practice and right. then, and then like one, maybe decent one yesterday, as well as having like the film, oblig you know, like the, the promo obligations and all that. And um, for us, this is a business. This is a regular trip, regular pack 12 trip, regular trip. We just did it. We know? just did it. Um, yeah. We do it every year. And so this is a, uh, yeah, no, it feels the, really good. Yeah. The, the no excuse bracket region, whatever continues. Yeah. Feels good. Feels good. <laughs> I mean, you know, it feels like we have a guillotine over our neck, but yeah, it feels great. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, I know it is kind of funny because I, I was texting my Yukon friend and, and they were like, oh, congratulations, you won. I'm like, man, I'm enjoying it. Th these, yeah, yeah. These, these wins are hard to get if you're Arizona and you know, maybe that will change over time and uh, will become known as a team that's really good in the tournament. But, you know, that's not that we've got some some games and some years to go until that sort of shifts. And and yeah. and and I was like, you know, we're kind of beyond I was telling him we're kind of beyond the territory of um, really squandering opportunity. But then that was that was under the the presumption that Baylor was going to win. Right. And I think Baylor, you know, we'd still be a two, three point favorite over them, but I don't think there would be the systemic scrutiny on our program if we lost right. a tough game to Baylor, as there will be if we lose sure. to Clemson, you know, hobbled Clemson team coming in on fumes all the way out to L.A. Sorry, but, you know, you got you got to get this one now. <laughs> yeah, Um Hopefully the team doesn't feel the same pressure that you and I are, are feeling right now. That's um, why we, we get to be fans. I'm not putting exactly it on right. I think Tommy's taking a perfect approach. It sounds like from, from Shear's uh, report courtside practice reporting that the team's loose and that's, that's perfect. They're light and yeah. loose. Yeah. And, and the, and the presser that he did where he's, he's like, look, you know, I think somebody asked him, Hey, like, do you worry about getting over the hump? And he's like, what hump? He's like, what, yeah. what, what hump yeah. do I have? I'm a third year coach. Uh, you know, we're, we didn't do great last year. We did pretty well the year before. This is a different team. We're going to do what we do, you know, and, and that's what a great approach in order to make sure that, you know, obviously as the years went on, the weight weighed on Miller so heavily and you could, you could see it, you could feel it in, in his coaching um, and you could see it in his recruiting strategy. You know, it just was kind of permeating through the, through the program. Um, and so whether or not you believe that a, a change was necessary, that, um, you know, lifting that weight off of him and, and moving on probably really useful. And so good, to, good to hear from Tommy that, uh, he, you know, he's, it's game by game, but there isn't, you know, it's just this team. It's just this year. Yeah. Um, it, it'll be a lot easier to to do that as a fan. But if you, like you said, we, we put some W's beneath us in the tournament. Yeah. And, and as, as I've said, I've, I've lost my trust in this team. That doesn't mean I've lost my faith in Tommy or the program overall. And so sure. I'm, I'm keeping faith that, this could be the the redemption arc that we're we're witnessing, and if and if not, so be it. We all know how to grieve really well, so we'll be back <laughs> together. So, yeah, together, <laughs> together we suffer. Um, yeah. Did you want to Did you want to cover a little bit of your guarding strategy, defensive? Or yeah. That... Um. So do we? Do you want to show? I, I sent you a link to mm -hmm. um. Yeah. Arizona Dayton. Okay. Um, and I think it's about the seven minute mark. Okay, let me pull that up. Um, and nope. so, you know, okay. a couple con a couple concerns. Um, you know, Hall is uh, is is fairly mobile. He, he can stretch it. He's he's a high usage guy, and so Ball is going to have his, his work cut out for him. And then they got a couple of guards that can hurt you um, if they were going to play as you know as pick and roll ball handlers. Now they don't, or spread out from that pick and roll ball handling as a kickout option. Um, thinking about Gerard, right? So yep. Hunter, you know, as that ball handler, pretty darn good. Um, you know, Hall, Hunter, and then kick out to to Gerard. That's a really good action. Yep. Um, really basic stuff, but difficult for us to cover in a way because Balo is going to need to to stick with Hall because he can pick and pop. Um, if Balo is caught flat footed or unsure, then either the either Hall or Hunter could blow by him. Are uh, you? And it's hard to help. Yeah. Is this Clemson Baylor that I'm pulling up or Dayton? Arizona. Arizona Dayton. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Hang on. Yeah, yeah. Hang on. Hang on. Arizona Dayton. Um, and so, you know, um, oh, you got some it right concerns, okay. some concern, but no, thankfully Clemson doesn't traditionally play, um, a lot of ball screen action. They don't really play a pick and roll. 
um, for whatever reason. Now they, they do run a lot of sets and we can talk about those in a sec. So, um, yes, seven minute mark ish. Yeah. Yep. So here it goes. Yeah. So, um, you know, this is a very high ball screen action, right? Um, you know, way out there, you've got Balo all the way at the three point line, um, because he has to respect, um, Holmes, right? right. If he plays it, if he, if he plays deep here, that, you know, Holmes can just take a wide open three, uh, and Holmes can hit him. So similar to Hall. Four- Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Um, and so unfortunately, um, we get exploited here. And so you can let the tape run. Um, you know, it's Balo's got a shade over there. He's got to do what he does. Obviously, our guys could do a better job of helping out, right. but um, you probably have um Nate Santos, who's a heck of a uh, ca- you know, catch and shoot, three point shooter standing there. And how do you help off of him right. when you know that he's probably gonna bang that? So um that happened. I think three or four possessions in a row where they just, they just drilled Balo, drilled Balo and um, Wildcat Authority forum. Um, shout out wildcatauthority.com as always. Yep. Um, remember Fry Rice was talking about before the Dayton game that he really did think he was really worried about Balo defending in the ball screen. I thought he was going to be fine. I was, I was wrong. I was, I was right for most of the game. That was 12 minutes left in the second half, but that was the point where, Tommy switched to go towards key shot at the five. Um, and, you know, while it wasn't perfect, it did make Dayton uncomfortable. And that's something that you and I have talked about repeatedly throughout the year mm-hmm. is, is that you really do, you, you know, you, you can't just let things become sort of automatic for the, for the opposing right. offense. Right. Com- comfort, especially with these rhythm teams that are so well balanced, which is how I just my surface analysis of Clemson is that they're just solid. They do, they do nothing spectacular, but everything really well. They're a 79% yeah. free throw shooting team. Yeah. They've got, they've got guys that can like chef Shefflin's a 50% three point shooter. Gerard, low usage, obviously, low usage but, but yes, but he yes. can, but you know, if you don't, if you don't you can make guard him out there, right. Yeah. Yeah. But think the, it's, it's nothing new. It's just how, with what focus and conviction are our guards going to disrupt the point of attack? Because I really feel like with a team like Clemson, tell me if you're, if I'm wrong, it seems like if we can get up in their chin yeah. and push them back a step, like we did at times with Dayton, if we can make it hard for them to get two point shots in the lane, because Hall's really skilled, Shefflin's really skilled, they can hit turnarounds. Like they don't need yep. a lot of height. Um, yeah. I think we'll bother them a little more than Baylor, but I think they're they're skilled. And so we yeah. we Baylor from the hot clips I saw was playing a really soft. I mean, Baylor was a was a mediocre defensive team this year, and that yeah. and that was their fate. But I think what where this game tips is can we get back to the games where we've played the most connected, intense perimeter defense, mm-hmm. we that's where we look almost unbeatable. The UCLA game in LA, a lot of the early games where we are just pressuring point of attack. I want those guards to be uncomfortable and um, not to be able to cut us up in the lane. And that's that's a lot to ask on defense, but I think that's what it that's what it's going to take from us um, going forward. You know. Yeah, that's what it's going to take to win. Um, yeah. So, I, did you did you have a clip for point for uh, yeah. Clemson downhill? Thinking about point of attack. Yeah. Let's see where that um, is. And then, you know, the other thing you have to worry about is they run a lot of sets that, you know, allow Joe Girard to get open. Yeah. Or and he and he he can hit from anywhere in the court. Yep. It looks like forty one percent doesn't need a lot of breathing room. Um, so he just, we're going to be chasing through screens that, you know, it's, it's going to be, it's like chasing Steph out there. Um, yep. so that's the reality. I know the guys are prepared for that. I'm sure that they've seen, <laughs> you know, they've seen the clips. Um, and this is, uh, this is a super high ball screen with Gerard as the ball handler. Yeah. And they, yeah. they run this action. They really like this action with Hunter on the baseline and what they're, what they're going to do is they're going to create this this sort of gravity as you like Mm -hmm. to call it towards the rim. And then this guy is going to take advantage of that and and get in the lane. And this is just curls in. Yeah. And it's Uh, decently defended. That's a a tough shot. Yeah. It's a tough shot, Um, but he he made multiple of those. 
-hmm. So they can hit you from different points. And that's why I think we've got to, we've got to really stop, stop penetration. Yeah. And I, and I think, you know, obviously, like you said, we're better suited for that than Baylor, but um, it is a job to do. And it's not like it's an easy job. Um, yeah. You know, can we do it? Yes. Have we seen we do it? We can do it. Yes. Um, do we do it? You know, it needs to be seen. Yeah. I mean, it'll be interesting to see the, what happens with Boswell early because, yeah. you know, if, if he's engaged, he's a decent defender. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, oh, a good defender. Yeah. you've got, you've got Bradley and, and Lewis. Uh, I think you're going to see a lot of them again. Um, yeah. Just, just because they're, they are so effective. If, if we have a lead, are you yes. going to see them? Um, and you look at, I, I said this, I woke up at like four o'clock in the morning before the Dayton game. <laughs> my kid woke me up. Yeah, yeah, my kid woke me up, but I could, normally I could fall back to sleep really easily. And I, I keep my brain on like 5% when I wake up to take care of the baby and then I go back. Nice. Um, I was just like at 95 as soon as I was like, oh, okay, cool. I'm, I'm awake for the day. Mm. Um. So I watched a lot of, of Dayton film and a lot of Arizona films nice. and I came to the conclusion and I, and I posted it afraid of, you know, jinxing or bad juju that, Hey, I don't, I don't think they Dayton's bench has anything to do in this game. Um, that ended up being totally right. The Arizona's bench scored something like 30 something points and Dayton's bench, I think scored two. Um, Clemson's bench is better than Dayton's bench. That's for sure. Um, Godfrey in particular is like a mini, it's like a young key shot. Hmm. um he only has one move really as he has a over the left shoulder post move and, and then he can offensive rebound some but um good defender uh just a you know good rebounder just a useful you know he's big he's athletic he's just a useful guy to have out there yeah yep. the other two guys that they bring off the bench i'm just not impressed with um yep. wiggins and then dylan hunter the younger hunter i think um they just Wiggins can kind of he he can hit the a spot up three, but it just doesn't really do anything else. Hunter can do really nothing, um, and so I love and you know calling back to your you know Baradon Award. I just love the impact that our guys can make off the bench. It's not like they're they're out there to spell guys or just absorb time. Um, they can be game changers, and I, and I think you're right that we're going to mm -hmm. see them out there, and they will be. Yeah, yeah. Somebody said it well. I think it was either shout out Sheer in the Wildcat Authority podcast or Mike and uh, Saul Bookman on the AZ Wildcats, mm -hmm. which I listened to this morning. Maybe they both kind of had points around this, that this is as well-rounded a roster rotation as any of us could have hoped for this year. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, talking about Arizona. And if we lose, it won't be because there was a gaping hole. It will yeah. be, it will be in our focus. It will be in our execution. It will be in our yeah. intensity. And so uh, that's been the story of this team. And there's every reason to believe that those things will be at an operational level tonight. Are you going by the way? I'm not going tonight. No, I, I have um, a presentation to my company, my sales group in like an hour here. And then um, in your Jersey, I just, <laughs> it was in my jersey yes I will be, actually. um and uh i don't you know i don't want to jinx it but i'm hoping that you know we're gonna play on saturday and i'll definitely be there and uh it's a lot to ask of of the wife to take care of the kids uh, totally repeatedly and and uh and deal with you know me being sad or or happy when i come home <laughs> you're using, you're using the, the jesse johnson philosophy which is if we lose against Clemson, you will right. not have you will not have wanted to spend your chips that way. That's correct. And, and if we win, then you will have something better to spend your chips on. That's exactly correct. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, and and then, you know, beyond that, and it's a whisper. You know, it's just a whisper. But if it was something beyond, don't that, do it. I, don't I, do I, it. I, I, told, I told her we're, we're packing up the whole family <laughs> and you know, we're driving an RV out. But, I already, uh, I, I already have a pact. I told you with my UConn friend that yeah, if yeah. we if we both make it, and uh, suddenly it's sort of becoming it's actually a, a little more possible. Yeah, I don't want to get I don't want to get there till till we get there because it can all vanish in a heartbeat. Absolutely can. Um, one game at a time. No one game at a time. Today's a huge one. Um, so let's let's keep it there. Um, yeah, it's uh. It's going to be an exciting one. I know that we're going to have a big fan base there. It's exciting yeah. to get to see all the all, all the people that I know that um or all the people on the Wildcat Authority board that are going. And so, like you said, we should have, you know, some some advantages here. 
where well, this is kind it, of our crowd. Yeah, and shout out to all the fans who represented in Salt Lake and who yeah, are going cool. today because people like you and me who who choose to to wait, um, you know, that's a luxury. And those of it you is. who who make you know bring that McHale spirit are going to have an impact on the game. Even the Clemson 100%. coach said he's like, there's going to be a lot of Arizona fans there, and you know that that doesn't necessarily correlate to an advantage, but it it usually in our recent history of of you know playing in vegas and phoenix and la it usually means we rise up that's where weren't we in la when we beat duke and then almost uh, we were in anaheim yeah well yeah there you go yeah yeah but similar yeah should have beat uconn yeah <laughs> maybe not they were a pretty good team they were they were pretty good <laughs> but I, I look i i that arizona team doesn't need uh to be apologized for because it had big flaws, but I don't oh, know about sure. Derek Williams. The first two fouls were just really bothered. It really bothered me in that one. Hang um, on to that. Yeah, I know. Let, let me let, <laughs> let me, let me just hold on. Let me just hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just carry all the unnecessary weight. <laughs> all right. Um, wow. We covered that. Did you want to say, so, so you're saying that the bench is a huge advantage for Arizona. Yeah, it yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what did you what did you what what was your assessment of Krivas just energetically? Yeah, it's a, yeah, it's ex, that's exactly what I wanted to talk about. Um, I thought you know I don't, I don't really remember his play in Long Beach State um, against Long Beach State, and they they weren't really the team to play him against realistically. No. Yeah, um, they're just they were just a, a, a small, scrappy, and, and 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 sort of physical, and um, and we had them you know anyways without you know needing to rely on Krivas. But I, I thought he uh, was pretty good. And and just a was quick he, just yeah. a quick little I've been looking through the Evan Maya you know hard to really oh, yeah, of put too much faith into those player ratings but he's mm-hmm. got he's got Krivas rated as a pretty respectable defensive player which which fits the the eye test over the last several weeks I think he's a sneaky sneaky good defensive player in a lot of ways you said it you said yeah, it, yeah. the defensive positioning has, has been good and and um, yeah I think he recovers well I, I think he gets mm-hmm. low in his hips and then yep. he's able to, to get it to get vertical really well so yeah I've, I've been impressed with him and I'm, I've got big hopes for him um but yeah the, the Dayton game yeah, I think he played like 10 minutes and he had four points and four boards and um and I he, he bothered home some and and so just it's just got like most teams just don't have a player of that quality yeah. um coming and off that, the bench in that size yeah yeah I, that's what I mean yeah I, I like him in this matchup because Clemson is not going to overwhelm you with athleticism down low. I totally. Mean, totally. So, I mean, this is, he, he's, he's solid athletically, but he's not going to jump over a phone book and right. he's, he's better laterally than most people think he'll be um, mm-hmm. probably a little better North South, but I think this is a game where he could actually hold his own and, and cause yeah. some, pro- cause some real problems. Especially, you know, you look at the roster on Clemson and what happens when PJ Hall goes to the bench. Um, they move Schiff, you know, that number four, that power forward. They move him to the five a lot because he's a good rebounder. Yeah. Um, and, and he likes to operate in the post. Krivas can, I think Krivas can handle that matchup. I think yeah. he's completely um, capable of of holding his own or, or besting that matchup. And so um, I love that for us that, you know, for them that that's, oh, we've got great rebounding and it's still great, you know, pretty good size, you know, moving down there. If we, you know, it's like, hey, we threw Krivas at you. He's going to grab those boards, you know, three inches above your head and um, or above your hands. And, um, you know, you're not really going to be able to finish that easily over his seven, six wingspan. That would that would be a really nice turn of events for us because it, it turns off a lot of what they like to do um, by, by playing that, by playing shift at the five. Nice. Yeah. 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 Wow. Um, Jaden, Jaden Bradley, I wonder, you know, if we're chasing and I guess KJ too, you know, if we're having to chase Joe Girard, if, if for some reason he's going ham, um, Jaden Bradley could be huge on that. Mm-hmm. Um, same thing. If he's, if you need to chase Hunter, if you need to chase Chase Hunter, um, mm-hmm. KJ Lewis, same thing. So their defense I think is going to be huge. If they can produce offensively like they did in that Dayton game. Um, I don't know that, I don't know who, you know, can stop us as a team. Yeah, I I agree. And I I like what another thing we have going for us about this matchup is neither of those guards is big. Neither right. of neither of those guards is is phenomenally quick. I think Hunter's a pretty good um, yeah. but you could interchange our guards with 100%. them. And 
this is almost like a Michael Dickerson on Wayne Turner, Michael mm. Dickerson on Jock Vaughn type situation. Mm-hmm. I would I would love to see KJ on mm-hmm. Ch- Chase Hunter and I agree because I think you can you can put anyone who's up to the task of staying on Gerard and it might even be a really good matchup for Love because he's a little taller and a little more physical. I, like, I yeah. like Love on that one. Yeah. And yeah, I think he gets through screens a little. I think he slips yep. through those a little easier and then the length like you said and mm-hmm. then the height, right? Um so so he I think he could back in like rear contest or or you know keep totally keep in keep in those plays a little bit better than than like a Kylan. Um but JB as well could play that. Um really interchangeable. Yep. Yeah. I'd so, like to see I, KJ with his physicality and his his height and length just really bother a hunter's passing lanes. Um, 100%. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, Clemson, again, like shockingly tall. Like, are we worried at all about, you know, their, their small forward is, or the two small forwards, the three small forward, like the three guys they play at the three are all like 6'8 to 6'10. Clark um, is an interesting interesting specimen. He's, he's actually yeah. the highest rated player on their team on MLI. Really? Yeah. Oh wow, that's interesting. I don't yeah, think have... much of them. So uh, <laughs> from the well, from the game footage that I've seen in the in the stats that I've reviewed, but it I mean their 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 hoop math stats to me speak to a very solid team that actually knows what its strengths like knows itself really well. Yeah, yeah. Um Clark is not an exceptional three point shooter. He's got a, a really right. nice foul rate. He shoots 82% from the line. He's yeah. 41, 42% on two point jumpers, but he doesn't take many, you know, yeah. really, really like he, he actually takes the seventh most one, two, three, four, five, six, seventh most shots on this. He's only takes like three shots a game. Yeah. That's what I mean. It's, it's really, just like... it's mostly those top three, top four guys. And then Wiggins off the bench, but they're all solid. I mean, their field goal percentage at the rim is really impressive. All of them yeah. are solid. Mm-hmm. They they can hit two point jumpers. Hall, Gerard, Hunter, Wiggins, Clark. Um, they can all hit a, a you know in that mid range. I'm thinking of the drop coverage there. Yeah, totally. And then you know everybody's okay from three. Um, it's funny they're 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 guys that we'd fear the most. Hunter and Hall are really their weakest. They're like 32, 33 percent and uh, three point shooters yeah they're like they're like yeah. caleb love except they don't shoot as many you know half of love shots or threes 40 percent of of hunter's shots are threes and he shoots at 33 percent. he's he really shouldn't i mean like what when i look at these numbers here i'll just share this i didn't mm-hmm. want to barrage people but here um when i look at these numbers on hunter who's right here mm-hmm. he's 57.5 at the rim and his his distribution of shots is really even for a point guard 32 mm-hmm. at the rim 28 of twos and 40 for threes um but he's only 33 percent from three and he's only 36.7 from two so this screams drop coverage <laughs> <laughs> yeah it sort the, of the like scares that, me <laughs> yeah the trouble is that he's just been he's been playing well above I know, you know his I know. his norm these past two games now yeah. you know th- there's a psychological you know there's a lot of psychological stuff where you say look maybe these guys come back down to earth in a way um yeah. hey they had a you know hitting the sweet 16 is a massive achievement for them you right. can see it in their, in their fan reaction and, and the team's reaction after winning um, you can see it in their preparation for not realizing, hey, they should probably just not fly back home and they should just, you know, fly to L.A., you know, like Alabama did. Um, instead, they're coming off a bit like minimal rest. Um, so, you know, does, does the adrenaline wear off? Does Chase Hunter come back down to earth and, and you know, become like a 30 percent something you know, jump shooter? You hope so. Uh, certainly our guys being defensive menaces, being up in them um, should play into that. And yep. uh, if if we're able to rattle them some they are a very 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 solid team and they they performed admirably well across the board against high competition yeah um so that's it's that's to their credit they don't just crater you know there's not one guy that's like hey i've got a 120 offensive rating and then i'm a 90 when i play nice competition yeah. they're really all still above 100 so it's quality offense but they have been known to make stupid decisions and kind of fall apart um, and not have the offense flow or, or, or really, um, you know, make some dumb passes or some dumb turnovers. 
uh, commit some dumb fouls. I, I'd like to think that if we, that our athleticism, that our energy can get them, that those guards can get them um, into some, some of that decision-making when they yeah. feel. Yeah. And I, th- I think Tommy's mindset is really well suited for this type of game because you really want to seize the aggressor role. If you're Arizona, mm-hmm. you, you want to make this hard and uncomfortable right from the start. Maybe even, maybe even take a few gambles early just to like, make them feel you even if they 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 slip a ball screen and they get a dunk i don't that doesn't bother me as much as if we're soft and and they you know they come into drop coverage and step up and hit three threes you know i was thinking the same where like if if they want to if if we end up picking up an offensive foul or something or a defensive, right. if we end up picking up a, a, a foul because we played aggressive like, i'm completely fine with that and they're early going um rather than you know like you said rather than just kind of you know playing lack you know without without that physicality without that force um mm-hmm. like he shot said when he when he missed that dunk like uh i don't did you you probably didn't see it on the highlights it wasn't they, on the highlight. i couldn't i couldn't find it anywhere he he missed like a murder you dunk it was mm-hmm. and it was an insane choice to jump right. like from where he did um because the guy was still in the lane and it, you know uh and he ends up you know, i think it slipped out of his hand a little bit and it bounced off back iron but after the game, I think he said he was like, yeah, I'm happy. I, like, that was a good thing. Like, we we're that was a tone setting, like, F you kind of like, this is the energy we're bringing. And, and yeah. you know, you can't stop us kind of thing. And so I like that. That's exactly the kind of, I'm okay missing that dunk if, uh, if you win. It, well, yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> we have been all lose by two. Uh, well, it's like one. that. <laughs> it's like, it's like love with that FAU game. Uh, yeah. And then he's done it a number of times. But, um, I, I, yeah, no, I, I think you're you're right on. I can almost picture them going right to Hall, and I want to see, you know, Keyshot come over on on the help side and just swat one into the stands, you know, like yeah, totally. And I think I think if we, however that expresses itself, if we come with that energy, uh, they're yeah. gonna have they're gonna have to beat us. And if if they have to beat us at that energy, then so be it. It's gonna take twelve threes from Gerard from thirty feet, and if that's the case, then what are you gonna do? um yeah, yeah yeah totally well i'm excited to see how it plays out um it's coming up soon here we are three hours gotta, basically from from tip time um, let's 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 sign off for today and then i was going to offer if we do win do you want to yes. jump on for a short one tomorrow yes <laughs> last last thing i'll get for the sake of the fans who are who are showing up for the game we can at least jump on for 30 minutes tomorrow yeah and, 100%. and, and the last thing i'll say is that it's 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 interesting that Alabama, Carolina, uh, Arizona, Clemson is the undercard, understandably. <clears throat> but Arizona and Clemson are three and one against Alabama and North Carolina this year because Clemson because Clemson split against Carolina, beat them on the road. Yeah, yeah. That's and right. then yeah. They, and then Clemson beat Alabama on the road. So so Clemson. Yeah, I saw that. So Arizona and Clemson combined three and zero oh against those teams. Three and one. Yeah. On yeah. well. Reno oh, on neutral, on neutral or on neutral or away. Yeah, nice. And so I think it would be a shame if Arizona lost just because if Clemson somehow gets by tonight, they're good. They've got to be completely gassed for Saturday. But <laughs> but more power to them. But I I, I want to know before since this is Thursday, yeah. do you if if we win, big, mm-hmm. big if are are you wanting to see Alabama again or North Carolina? No. Um, you know, I think the smart thing to say is Alabama, um, hard to, hard to beat a team twice, but, um, you know, that, that I, and, and they do what, what, you know, when they do it right, they do what hurts us the most, right. Is that they just completely drill threes. Um, and Nate Oates is a pretty darn good coach, I think actually, um, UNC, I think is a, is a very scary team, honestly. I, I don't, I don't, I wouldn't want to, I don't love playing UNC. And so I guess it would be uh, Alabama, but I will take either. What's, what, what's your take there? Mm, you can probably guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want, I want nothing to do with Alabama simply because I feel yeah, I like figured. that, that was one game where it felt like uh, yeah, the, we were the, lucky. Other, the other team beat themselves a little bit. Yeah. We also didn't play that great, but for me, it's more that the exciting thing in the tournament is to play the best. And I, I want to see us go to another level. Cause that's, what's really inspiring to me about following sports. It's like, I don't follow the 100%. NHL and yeah. yet 
NHL playoff hockey is so awesome. It's because, be, because of the the level of comp the competitive level that those guys achieve. I want to see, believe it or not, and I and I don't expect other fans to join me on this. I'd rather have us lose and play an, an incredible game against Carolina um than kind of play flat and sort of feel like we didn't really earn it against Alabama. And I don't think that would be the case, by the way. I think we have to play really well to beat Alabama. Yeah. And that's okay. You can disagree. I totally understand the final four would be amazing, but I want to see it. I want to see that. <laughs> that's the only thing. I want to see, I want to see that. I want to see, and I'll take it. Right. I want to see that Caleb love. Um, yes, I want to see, I want to see how the team, how the team responds to what would be, that would be one of the great games in Arizona yes. basketball history. And so I completely agree. And, and, yes. and what, what do I want um, out of my heart? It's, it's like, yes, I want to see that game. I want to be there for that game. I, I want to live that experience. Yeah. And it, and like you said, if like, if we get, you know, the sword through us, like that's, so that's the way, that's the way it ends. But you know, it was a worthy opponent. It would be a bit of a letdown to have to go play. And now I'm getting, we're getting ahead of ourselves, but we're not the ones on the team. So, um, you know, we're fans. The, the, the GG fairy, please <laughs> yep. pass over our heads. Yep. Um, but uh, it'd, be, it'd be a bit of a letdown to have to, to end up playing um, Alabama again. And certainly, um, an uninspired game against them wouldn't feel very good, but I, I would, I would wrap I think, myself yeah. that final four banner and sleep like a baby that night. Well, so. I think they, I think they <laughs> kick our ass. I think they, they'd beat us if we didn't play really well. And honestly, I think we'd play better against Carolina than we would against Alabama for all of the above reasons. Yes. We, ha we have not played a game since Purdue and before that Duke where we were legitimately underdog. The dog. Yeah, And I think this team at this point of the, the maturation, part of the reason I say Carolina is not because I want to lose and I think we'd beat Alabama. No, I actually think we'd have a better chance against Carolina mm -hmm. because of that. I think we probably lose to Alabama. And, but I mean, I'm not saying like I'd expect us to lose, but I'm saying like, I think that, I think we would have a really hard time and the teams like that, I really hate losing to teams like that because they're just basically they're like a really talented version of ASU, you know, and mm. I hate that because they're, there's not a lot of discipline. They're just yeah. shooting 43s and feels I'd yucky. Not, I, I think UNC is really similar to Arizona and, they are. Yeah. and a lot of, a lot of their makeup is really similar. And I think that would be yep. an incredible game. And I think be, our guys, honor. I think our guys would. I think our guys would respond. I actually would think step they, up for it. Yeah, I think yeah. I, I'd like our chances against Carolina. I'm not saying we'd we'd win any more than I'm saying we'd lose to Alabama, but I think we'd play better against Carolina. It'd make better television. That's for damn sure. Well, well yeah, uh, you know, you know, everybody's pulling for that in the ratings division. Absolutely. Well, let's tune in tonight. You're going to watch this one live. Yes. I, I yeah. hey, to my credit, Wildcat Nation and Mike Defoe, I actually requested. We had some plans that I requested. We Ooh. move, which I which wow. I sort of like broke my own oath there. Proud of you. <laughs> so we'll tune in, and hopefully you'll be hearing from us tomorrow. Bear down, everybody. Let's bring it in LA, and and let's let's yeah, let's keep playing tomorrow.